Chess. Good morning. We'd like to welcome everyone to St. John Zeese United Church of Christ. Thank you so much for coming out and being a part of our uh, worship experience this morning as we welcome each and every one of you on this wonderful uh, first Sunday in the month of August. Uh, we welcome those of you that are joining us live in the sanctuary, as well as those that may be fellowshipping, worshiping with us via live stream. Uh, thank you so much for uh, being with us this morning. I was certainly glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, we will rejoice and be glad in it. One thing that can certainly be said without any sense of contradiction, and that is God is good. All and all the time, God is good. amen. Uh, being that it is the first Sunday, we always like to recognize, uh, acknowledge, and appreciate uh, those that are celebrating both birthdays and anniversaries. So let's start with birthday brothers and sisters. Anyone born in the month of August? Chris Hardorn, Daffy, Julia. You're pointing. Linnell, you too. And I just got word that Bob, Ke oh, Daphne, I got you. Got Daphne. Who else? Who? Someone on the front row had a birthday. No, she got the free birthday plus one. No one came for that one. And then she had a second one. And then she came. And in New York now, she had his third one today. OK. She's got three birthdays. Okay. I'll, yeah, just, just in case you missed the first two. Okay. And I, uh, I just got word that today is actually Bob Kelly's birthday. Uh, Mary Jessie is celebrating her 94th birthday this week. So, Henry, can we, uh, can we do happy birthday? Anybody, any couples jump the broom? Jennifer and Chuck, Rosie and Bob, um, happy anniversary. Uh, Jennifer, oh, Julia and Dave? August the 2nd. August the 2nd, you just had yours. So congratulations for all of those uh, married couples. Um, we uh, celebrate uh, along with you. Um, let's go ahead and uh, pray, and then uh, Deborah Wilson will come with our uh, call to worship. God, we thank you, we praise you, we love you for uh, this day uh, being another expression of your love, your grace, uh, your mercy. Um, we're grateful, God, that you have allowed us to see it. Even as we celebrate these birthdays and we celebrate these anniversaries, uh, we celebrate, God, the gift of life which was given to us by you. Uh, for those of us that have a personal relationship with you, we celebrate two birthdays, our biological birthday as well as our spiritual birthday uh, when you adopted us uh, into the family of God. We now, God, ask your blessings on uh, this service today. Um, we uh, have a variety of things that we are celebrating, including our young people who will be starting back uh, to school this week, God. We are praying uh, your blessings and your protection and your covering over our children. We're praying for uh, those teachers and those counselors, those principals, those bus drivers, all of those, God, that will have our children in their care, even, God, those um, that attend daycares, et cetera. Uh, God, we realize you sit high, you look low, you know and do all things well. We will continue to put our faith, our hope, and our trust in you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Sister Deborah. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. I invited you to the call of worship, calling all children our living God. 
The gospel is good news for every age and every stage of life. Let us worship together the young and the old. The good news is proclaimed in God's word and also with crayons, song, snack, and playtime. Let us worship together in every generation. We come together with different abilities, learning in a rainbow of ways and styles. Let us worship together with our family and faith. All is welcome in the arms of Christ, who proclaim, let the children come. Let us worship together and unite in eternity. I guarantee you do not know the words of this hymn. The worship committee found it online. It was written in 2015 by a woman named Carolyn Winfrey Gillette. Um, we picked it because it really fit the themes of what we wanted to do. I'm going to play through the tune, It's Morning Has Broken. You probably know that one. Um, even if you don't end up singing all the words, they really could be a nice prayer um, for your use through the week. <laughs> this time, if we could have all of our students that are present uh, come up front, please. And uh, Sister Deborah Wilson. And we also invite teachers, if you like uh, the if teachers. If any teachers. Or any personnel up, that working in the schools. If we have, I know we have retired teachers, but if we have any active teachers, you're certainly welcome to come up as well. Today, we have before us backpacks to be carried to and from school. These backpacks will contain work to be done, work that has been returned, books to be studied, tools to complete homework, notebooks, pencils, pens, crayons, rulers, scissors, glue sticks, 
and other items used will find their way in and out of the backpacks. Some days, so much stuff will fill their backpacks that the students may find it difficult to walk. Other days, they would be light and nearly empty. On each day, these backpacks represent work required to help them learn and gain knowledge. As, and, and, and as in every aspect of their life, we bring the before God for blessings. Could we, uh, could we bow our heads, stay, remain standing? Would each of you bow your heads as we pray? Gracious God, we lift to you today, these students and these staff, these teachers, these instructors, they stand here ready to receive your blessings and they commit themselves to study and learning in, school, in the school year ahead. We ask your blessings, God, on each and every one of them. Further, we ask your blessings upon these backpacks. They will hold the schoolwork of each student and will be carried from home to school and back again. As these backpacks are carried, may they be reminded of the love and care of this congregation that surrounds them each and every school day. We pray as well for the teachers, for the staff, for the administrators in our schools. May they also be sustained by your ongoing blessings. May they be reminded that this congregation embraces their call to teaching and learning and surrounds them with love and care as well. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus, who we seek to follow day by day. It's in his name we pray, thank God, amen. Amen. And I think we have some gift tags. gift tags will go on the backpacks for each of the children and then when they uh, when they go to Sunday school uh, a little later this morning we also have brand new children's Bibles for each and every one of our students can we say congratulations to our students and to our staff okay. all right you may go back to your seats thank you so much At this time, we uh, would like to acknowledge, um, mention a few announcements, uh, also uh, go over our prayer requests and praise reports. We're getting close. Tuesday, August the 13th, 4.30 to 7 p.m., we will have our annual uh, family food truck night. Uh, plenty of food and fun, fellowship. There will be uh, live music. Uh, our prayer ministry uh, will have a table as well as we uh, look to do uh, outreach efforts and uh, lift up people that are requesting specific prayer. Uh, thanks to Gwen Lewis for uh, scheduling uh, the trucks. Um, and that will be for the next three consecutive months, August, September, and October, the second Tuesday. And evidently the word is getting out in the community because we've had other uh, people that own uh, food trucks to reach out to us so we are very encouraged um, as the word gets out. So um, uh, come out yourself, share that information with others, family, friends, people in the community. We would love to have you fellowship with us. Um, we have made a, a few changes in the uh, Sunday school schedule for the month of August. Um, actually, Carrie Johnson, not Patricia Herring, will be working with uh, Mary Jane Montgomery and then the last Sunday uh, of the month, um, Claudia Matthews will um, work with uh, Jennifer Scarborough. And uh, we will have all of that information updated for you um, in next week's, uh, next week's uh, bulletin. Um, after a test run uh, last month that went very well, I have now officially started a monthly Bible study at Primrose retirement community in Newburgh um, on the first uh, Thursday of every month at 1.30 p.m. 
and uh, want to certainly thank uh, Linnell uh, Lucius for joining me uh, this past Thursday and doing a uh, beautiful rendition of Amazing Grace. Um, people uh, in that retire, uh, retirement community, very similar to Woodmont, uh, that we go every third Sunday, uh, really appreciate uh, having a worship experience. And again, anyone that uh, is ever wanting to join us with either of those outreach efforts, you are certainly welcome. Um, our daily Bible reading challenge um, began for the month of August on the 1st, today being the 4th. You should be reading, if you haven't already, the fourth chapter out of the book of Romans. So let's uh, continue um, that daily Bible reading challenge, getting more word into each and every one of us. Uh, of course, our Wednesday Bible study, 12 noon, live, 6 p.m. via Zoom, 18 profound lessons that we've learned from Jesus Christ. Um, on our prayer list uh, this morning, um, spoke with Connie Seifert yesterday. Um, she finally has her surgery scheduled for this coming Wednesday, uh, August the 7th at uh, 1030 a.m. Uh, I'm actually gonna go to the hospital at 8 a.m. to have prayer with her as she prepares. So let's uh, keep Connie in our prayers for a successful procedure this coming Wednesday. Our continued prayers for Minister Cheryl Ricketts, for Connie Sensmeyer, Joyce McFarlane, Jolene and Bill Sensmeyer, Wanda Hines, LaDonna Bunch, uh, Patrice Cabell, uh, Tonda and Larry Pauley, Natalie McGuire, uh, Darlene Perrinan, who is here with us today, um, Irina Pearson, that's a 12-year-old young lady at uh, the Youth Care Center, YCC, uh, prayers for healing for Deacon Nathan Botzell and Deacon Karen Harper, members of Memorial Baptist Church. Uh, certainly prayers for our own Chris uh, Hardorn. Um, thanking God for a safe arrival yesterday. My sister, Reverend Julia Scott, and her husband, Gary, uh, relocated from Indianapolis, Indiana to Anna, Texas. That's right outside of Dallas. And I spoke with my sister this morning. The flight went very, very smoothly. And so uh, we pray for them as they go through the relocation uh, process. Um, Jeff Myra came up to me. We prayed for his uh, friend that he worked with for several years at the fire department, Mike Martin, and he is doing very well. So uh, God, we are grateful for uh, his uh, recovery. Um, today marks um, Pat and I's fourth uh, anniversary here at St. John Z's. And so first of all, we, uh, we want to thank God for the privilege, uh, the blessing, and the opportunity to serve here. Secondly, uh, we want to thank the members of St. John Z's, um, the friends, uh, people in the community, uh, for your love, your prayers, and your support. Um, I think about four years ago when uh, first Sunday I stood in this pulpit and there were uh, 23 people uh, in the pews that Sunday. Uh, God has, uh, has brought us a mighty long way. Amen. Uh, I also want to thank uh, many of my friends uh, from Memorial, from New Hope. When all the other churches, many of the churches in town were shut down, uh, they made St. John's East their temporary church of choice until uh, their fellowships opened. And all of that uh, was an encouragement and certainly a blessing to Sister Pat and I. And uh, we certainly want you guys to know uh, we are grateful, we are thankful, and we are appreciative. <laughs> Bereaved families. Uh, unfortunately, several, Rhonda Drake, who was funeralized Friday at Memorial Baptist Church, Deacon Tim Beatty, the brother-in-law of Reverend Adrian and Brooks Sr., was funeralized yesterday, Saturday, in Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, Deronica Edwards, who is the daughter of one of Pat's uh, good friends, former co-workers, Velvet, uh, daughter was only 36 years of age, uh, unfortunately passed away uh, from a heart attack, was funeralized yesterday at Liberty Baptist Church. And then we are praying for a friend of mine, Reverend uh, Brenda Ward, 
whose brother Calvin Watson uh, passed away a couple of days ago. Uh, we are keeping all of those families lifted in our prayers. Any additional prayer requests or praise reports that anyone would like to share? I'll go ahead and give you one because she just gave it to me. Uh, the Garretts, uh, Megan and Austin are 20 weeks in, so uh, they are doing well. And, and what's the baby's name again? Graham. A baby Graham, all right, 20 weeks in, congratulations. And uh, uh, we're always thrilled about uh, new additions. And that's, um, that's one of the signs of a growing church. Uh, when you have young families and those young families are uh, having additions to their family, then they become an addition to our church family. Um, I can remember, and I know Joan is sitting back there in the back, uh, we can remember when we only had uh, one child going back to church school and to see a large group of young people here this morning, um, it lets us know that God's favor and blessings are certainly upon us. Um, any other prayer requests, praise reports? Good to see you, Brother Frank Patton. Uh, always good to see you, my friend and my brother. Uh, let's pray, God, thank you for this time and for um, every blessing, for every opportunity you have bestowed upon us, how you're blessing us right now in the present, and yes, God, how you shall continue to bless us in the future. Uh, God, you heard, but you already knew every name that is on this prayer list. You're also aware, God, because you're an omniscient God, of the people whose names were not mentioned. Some, God, are in Deaconess Midtown, Deaconess Gateway. Uh, some, God, are in rehab facilities. They are in uh, nursing home facilities. But because you're an omnipresent God, your spirit abides in all of those places. We ask blessings, God, of healing, health, restoration and recovery for those God that are going through health challenges and then yes God even for those bereaved families the Bible tells us that you are the God of all comfort comfort God as only you can do and we will continue to give your name praise in Jesus name thank God amen, amen. Jesus Christ uh, taught his disciples to pray in this manner our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As it is our custom here at St. John's East, if you have your word, physical Bible, electronic device, uh, cell phone, put your hand on your word and repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I, am. I am what it says I am. It says I am. And I can do I can what it says I can do. I am a believer, not a doubt. I am a doer, not just a hearer. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's turn in the Old Testament to the book of wisdom, the book of Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, and we will look at one verse this morning verse 7. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. And I'm going to put a little extra focus, a little extra emphasis on the B clause of verse 7. And with all thy getting, get an understanding, the word of God for the people of God. And we would like to talk for uh, a few minutes this morning on this subject, on this topic, and on this thought. Five facts every Christian should understand. Five, uh, five
five pieces of information, but they are facts because you will find each one of these in the Word of God. Um, if you are taking uh, not just mental notes, but if you're taking written notes this morning, our very capable secretary, Linda Carter, has put all five of the facts on the back of your bulletin. Uh, you will have both the fact and you will have the corresponding scripture uh, that goes along with it. Uh, I would certainly encourage you to make notes of any of these that uh, might strike you uh, personally. Uh, one of the things I believe uh, about the Word of God and, and my life experience has now proven uh, any and every situation or circumstance that we may find ourselves facing, may find ourselves dealing with, may find ourselves going through, there is a response, um, there is an answer uh, to that issue, to that challenge, to that circumstance. It's found in the Word of God. Now, it's in there, um, but you're not going to access those answers. You're not going to uh, get those responses unless you make the intentional effort uh, to get into the Word of God, read the Word of God. That's the reason why we uh, push Bible study um, so intentionally. That's why we implement it. Thank you, Sister Lecture Shane, uh, a daily uh, Bible reading because as time goes on, um, those scriptures that you read a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, five years ago, the Spirit of God will bring uh, that word back to your remembrance uh, at the time that you need it most. Uh, one of the things I'll deal with and mention briefly um, is the subject of prayer, but coming in this morning, Brother Ward uh, asked me a question, and he was kind of smiling when he said it. I didn't know if he was serious or not. He said, Brother John, can you pray specifically for my back? I said, absolutely. Uh, we have not because we ask not. Uh, when you go to your physical doctor, you tell him if your back's hurting, you don't tell him your foot is hurting. You tell him your back is hurting. Well, the same way you talk to your earthly doctor and your earthly physician, that's the same thing we do when we talk to our heavenly father or our heavenly physician. So in the name of Jesus, Ward, and by the power of his shed blood, I pray comfort and healing for your back even right now. That wasn't even in my notes. I'm dealing with five facts that I believe every Christian should not only hear, read, understand, but also look to see how you can implement and apply these to your day-to-day -day life. I'm putting extra emphasis there because I still run into church folk that only want to do spiritual things or they only want to pray, they only want to read scripture, they only want to read their Bibles on Sundays. And then we, we do have those two-day-a-week Christians. They, uh, they'll do Sunday and Wednesday. But uh, I'm trying to push the point this morning that your relationship with God should be a seven day a week, a 12 month, a 365 day relationship. Let, let's look at these facts. Uh, the first one, you see it right there in your notes, that God doesn't tell us to analyze him. You know what he tells us? He tells us to trust him. Uh, Y'all know where that's found. Y'all have heard this numerous times. Trust in the Lord all thine heart, lean not into your own understanding, and then guess what the end result will be? If you in all ways acknowledge him, yeah. he shall direct thy paths. A lot of times we find ourselves, if we be honest, we're going in the wrong direction. The wrong direction sometimes is from a uh, personal perspective. Sometimes we're going the wrong direction in our business life. Sometimes we're going the wrong direction or we're making wrong choices 
uh, in our personal relationships. And so whenever things aren't going from your perspective the way they ought to be going, one of the first questions you should ask yourself, am I trusting God in that particular and in that specific area of my life? Because a lot of us, and I understand it because early in my Christian walk, my Christian career, I, uh, I used God as a, uh, how, how would y'all say it, as, a, uh, as an emergency type situation. As long as life was going good, uh, I had very little time for God. I had very little time to pray. I had very little time to study. But when an emergency arose and when things were going awry, then, man, I'm calling on, on God on a regular basis, on a continual basis. Well, uh, God doesn't appreciate that. God doesn't uh, like to be used just in the case of emergencies because we say we have a personal relationship with him just like you have personal relationship with your wife, your husband, your kids, your friends. You don't just talk to them uh, when you have a problem. You talk to them on a regular basis. You communicate to them on a regular basis. It's the same thing with God. Now, when you look at Proverbs, though, Proverbs, uh, the author of Proverbs gets real specific. He says, trust in God with everything you have. And then here's where the challenge comes for us. Lean not into your own understanding. How many of y'all other than me have ever made the mistake of leaning too hard on your own understanding? Yeah. Uh, and how did that work out for you? Uh, maybe it worked out well for a while. Maybe it worked out well temporarily. But if you continue to live life on your own terms, you calling the shots, you making the decisions, I guarantee you, you're going to reach a point where you're going to need God. And so this scripture uh, helps us, kind of gets us to refocus, tries to uh, get us to reassess our priorities. Continue reading. He says, acknowledge him in all of your ways. Yeah. <coughs> let's, um, let's quit just acknowledging God in areas of uh, religion or even, yes, areas that we, con uh, that we consider spiritual. Uh, start acknowledging God in your personal life, in your business life, even in your recreation. Acknowledge God and then he's given us a promise that he would do what? He would direct our paths. The next fact that I believe all of us need to understand, and I like uh, this line here, it says, if you're worried or concerned about it, that's a what? That's a sign that you need to pray about it. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. I'm going to read King James first, and then I'm going to give you the Living Bible translation. Be careful for nothing, King James. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And, Lord, I like this promise, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, I would interject in there, uh, surpasses all human uh, intellectual uh, and understanding, shall keep both your hearts and minds uh, through Christ Jesus. That's King James. Take a, take a look at this Living Bible translation. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. Now, I'll be the first to admit that first line in the Living Bible translation, don't worry about anything. Uh, how many of y'all know that's, uh, that's a tough one? That's a tough one because it's a human tendency when things aren't going well or things aren't going in the direction that we think or would prefer or would like for them to go. It's a natural human tendency to do what? To worry. But ask yourself this question. How much 
did worrying about your situation, how much about an increased arena uh, of anxiety, how much did that help? How much did that change? How much did that improve? And so, see, sometimes this stuff is spiritual in the Bible, but I got to tell y'all, and I, and I say this to my uh, non-Christian and non-believing friends. I tell them, even though you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior, I still tell them, I still share with them the truth of God's Word because so many things in the Bible are not just spirit-led. Uh, they're not just uh, God-breathing. And this came up in Sunday school this morning over at Memorial. Some non-believing people will challenge the believer and say, oh, uh, John, all that Bible stuff, all that stuff you read in the Bible, that was written, uh, that was penned by a man. Show you right. But if you read the Bible closely, you will find out that the Spirit of God breathed on those individuals. The Spirit of God inspired those individuals to write what is in this Bible. But let me get back to my point. For those of you that may not be strong on the spiritual tip, there are things in the scripture that just make good sense. If, if I figured out that me worrying all night long did not improve, did not help, did not uh, change my situation and circumstance for the better, then maybe, just maybe, now for me, there is no maybe, it's a, a certainty, but maybe I ought to try uh, a different route. Maybe I ought to try a different alternative. And I'll go ahead and tell you, you don't have to say man because I already know I'm right on this. Some people have to wait until the quicksand is all the way up to their neck before they will pray to God. But have whatever it takes to get the job done, God will help you in that area. So quit worrying about anything, but let's start what? Let's start praying about everything. Tell God your needs. The Bible says, uh, let your requests be made known unto God. And then I'm going to reread verse 7. If you do this, you will experience God's peace. And some of y'all do understand there is a difference between man's peace and God's peace. <laughs> One thing about I found out about peace from the human perspective, many times that peace comes from uh, how do I say, manufactured situation, circumstances. Uh, sometimes that can be through uh, appeal. Sometimes that can be something you drink. Sometimes, and uh, don't act like you don't know what Mary Jane is, something that you smoke uh, that, uh, and, and matter of fact, um, everybody on my mother's side of the family growing up in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, uh, everybody smoked cigarettes. Mm -hmm. uh, my granddaddy uh, raised tobacco on a tobacco farm. So I, so I understand, I understand the logistics. Now, <clears throat> when my mom and her sisters, my aunts and uncles got older, they all continued to smoke. And one of the things they would tell us as kids, uh, and how many of y'all remember that line, uh, do as I say, not as I do. Uh -huh. Y'all remember that. And, and that's what they, it was all right for them to smoke, but we, we couldn't smoke. Thank God uh, we don't to this day. But here's what they would say, uh, smoking a cigarette calms my nerves. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's calming your nerves while it's what? While it's attacking your lungs and while it's attacking your heart and doing all types of uh, physical things that are not to your advantage. And so the other thing, as we look uh, at God's peace, you don't need artificial ways of getting peace, uh, getting a good uh, um, a night of sleep because the Spirit of God will help you in those uh, areas. And notice, and I'll move to number three, he'll keep your heart and your mind, but there is a condition through Christ Jesus. That's why at the end of this sermon, like I do each and every week, I always give an invitation to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because you can have, quote unquote, everything else in your life in order, not have that relationship, and ultimately you're going to have an issue and a problem. Let's move to number three on facts that I believe every Christian should understand. 
even when people leave you, I got some good news. God will never leave you. Now, I found, Pat, that this was interesting uh, because I found this verse, Matthew 28, verse 20. I found it, categorically speaking, in the area that we call the Great Commission. Uh, that's when Jesus is preparing uh, to catch a cloud back to heaven, and he's giving what we would call his last marching orders to his disciples before he goes back to heaven. I'm not going to read the entire commission, but I am going to give you verse 20. It says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and then you got the promise, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world or even to the end of the age. And so when you really start reading, studying, digging into, memorizing, and meditating uh, on the word of God, you will find out that some things in the word are conditional. Uh, God will do this if you will do that. Quit uh, expecting God to do it all, and all you do is sit back and receive the blessing and the benefit. So the benefit or the blessing here, conditionally, he's with us, <coughs> excuse me, even until the end of the age, but did, did we completely forget? Did we completely ignore? Did we completely overlook the A clause in that verse, teaching them to observe whatsoever I've commanded you? We just bless these children. We just bless these teachers and these staff on what they will begin this upcoming week from what? From a secular learning standpoint. Isn't it also important that we, and they're back there in the library right now, isn't it also a necessity? Shouldn't it be a priority that we are teaching our young people what it means to have a relationship with God? Do y'all realize that the stuff that they are learning in kindergarten, grade school, middle school, high school, and college, one day all of that's going to pass away, but the Bible says that the word of God will abide forever? Man, we got to have what? We got to have some balance here. Yes, I believe in secular education. Yes, I believe in the importance and how uh, it will positively impact our children uh, later with employment. But I also understand uh, that the Bible teaches us what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and then turn around and lose his own soul. And so understand this morning that it happens to the best of us. What do you mean by that, Brother John? Uh, it happens to the best of us that people will leave us. Uh -huh. And, and y'all don't have to say man on that either. But everybody in this room, at some point in their life, you've had somebody leave you. Now, sometimes uh, that was their fault. And if you really be honest this morning, sometimes it was your fault. Uh, sometimes you didn't have anything to do with it, but for whatever the reason was, the person left you. Yeah. <coughs> that could have been in a personal relationship. Uh, how many of y'all other than me uh, ever had a breakup with a boyfriend or girlfriend? Okay, everybody's hand is not up. Okay. Uh, I'll go back to the Old Testament, Ten Commandments, thou uh, shall not lie. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, I don't care how handsome you think you are, uh, how cute and beautiful, everybody's had somebody that done played out, done left you, found, found a boo better than you, all that kind of thing. So sometimes that's how, that's how people leave you. Now, let me, let me, be, let me be a little more serious. What about when somebody transitions from this life into eternity? They have what? They have left you. I've been to, Frank Patton, I've been to numerous wakes, funerals, and homegoing celebrations, and I see uh, family members going up to the casket, hollering, screaming, shaking the casket. I don't know how I'm going to make it without you. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, see, this again uh, illustrates and puts emphasis on the importance of God and a relationship with God. How many of us are honest enough to admit 
that uh, these bodies that we currently live in were not created nor made to exist forever. Have you figured that out? They're not going to be here forever. And so what God does, <coughs> God has a plan for us. Yeah. Uh, and and that actually, uh, that's going to be my next point, number four. He has a plan for us uh, that we cherish, that we appreciate, that we love um, uh, our family members, our friends, our church members while we what? While we have them. Uh, I went to that funeral yesterday, 36 year young, yeah. heart attack, okay? And while, while the pastor was up doing the eulogy, and y'all know the routine, either you view uh, the body before or you view the body at the end of the service. Well, they decided yesterday, and, and I prefer this, uh, to do it early part of the service, and then prayerfully the word of God will help people uh, pray, encourage. But I noticed about 10 minutes into the pastor's eulogy, uh, your friend Pat Velvet, Velvet got up and walked up to the closed casket and started holding the casket. She was crying, this is my baby, this is my baby. People tried to come up and comfort her. She said, leave me alone. That's my baby. That's my baby. You can understand the grief. Uh, Y'all know what the statistics say. Statistics say that children should bury their parents, not the other way around. So my point of emphasis is even when somebody younger and we didn't expect them to leave us prematurely, I got good news. God is still what? God is still with us. As a matter of fact, the Bible says... <clears throat> that God is a very present help in the time of trouble. So the next time somebody leaves you intentionally, or I can go ahead and flip it, maybe you were the one that left. Maybe you were the one that had a change of heart or a change of mind. The good news this morning, God will never leave us. Let's move to number four. I like it. It says God's timing is better than our timing. We find that in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. Uh, it's one of my favorite texts. Linda Carter has this on the bottom of every one of her emails. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. <coughs> For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts. We do have to reach a point to understand that God is God and we are not, okay? That sounds simple, but it's a challenge that we've had ever since the Garden of Eden. Uh, one of the reasons Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden is because they fell, uh, William Nellum, for what I call the okey-doke of Satan. Uh, God had a plan, okay? The plan was for man to live forever, uh, to exist in a perfect utopia. And I want y'all to pause just for about 30 seconds and think about what it would actually look like and feel like uh, not to ever get sick, uh, not to ever age, not to ever have to wear glasses, not to ever have to take medication, not to ever age, in other words, uh, Adam and Eve were not born, Adam and Eve were created, and the plan was for them to live forever. Uh, what would it feel like that you would have every need met, but you would never have to go to work? What would it feel like, and I don't know if I particularly cared about this one, Pat, but that, that was a fact back then. I happen to be a big meat eater, but back in the Garden of Eden, nobody ate meat. Everybody was a vegetarian. All you ate uh, was berries and fruits and salads and all that kind of thing. No wonder they lived like Adam to be over 900 years of age. But think about how beautiful that situation was. The Bible puts it this way. 
The lion shall lay down with the lamb, and there will be peace in the valley. Y'all know y'all see them pictures a lot of time with Jesus holding a little lamb, and then in the background you see a lion and a tiger and a cheetah. You know why that was? Because nobody was eating meat. Uh, no one was carnivorous back then. But when Adam and Eve sinned, y'all do understand, the entire dynamic changed. Uh, now, <coughs> hate uh, and evil and jealousy and resentment, all of that came in immediately, and those beautiful rose bushes now had what? Now had thorns on them. Uh, those wasps and those bees and those mosquitoes that used to not sting anybody, now they, they sting in people now. And now those, those lambs and those antelopes, they what? Uh, y uh, I used to watch, I'm old school, back in the 60s, uh, I watched uh, Wild Kingdom on Sunday afternoons. And I would watch how a lion or a cheetah would, would stalk that antelope or that zebra. Um, uh, and, and we call it the balance of nature, but it's a, it's a horrible thing if you're on the receiving end and, and you're the one getting chased. The whole thing changed, and uh, for the first time, physical death came about. Man began to age at that point, and I don't have time to expound upon this the way I really want to, but one of the aspects that I threw in was jealousy and envy came in for the first time. And, and do you know how serious jealous and envy became? The first murder that occurred in the Garden of Eden was because of jealousy, and it wasn't uh, for somebody over in Vietnam or somebody over in Russia or somebody over in Japan. It was two biological brothers. And then, here's what really got me, Steve Hardor. You know what the jealousy, where the jealousy came about? The fact of how they worshiped. That one, um, God uh, was more favorable uh, to Abel's form or direction of worship than he was Cain. Now, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about me and my brother Steve. If me and my brother Steve were both worshiping God and God preferred the way Steve did it more so than the way I did it, I'm not, I'm not mad at Steve. Matter of fact, I'm looking at Steve to see if I can emulate or duplicate what he's doing so I can be pleasing to God. But see, this is where evil comes in. Satan comes in and says, well, since he did it so-called better than you, why don't, we, uh, why don't we go ahead and get rid of him? Why don't we go ahead and kill him? And that's why when you hear that line, am I my brother's keeper, uh, that, was, that didn't just come from a, a movie. I wish I could think of the name of it, Pat. New Jack City, there it is, there it is. Uh, when, uh, when Nino killed G-Money uh, because he got jealous of him, that had to do with a woman, that's a whole new subject. But my point is, don't get so envious and so jealous that you're going to do something evil or wrong to somebody else. Look for a way to do something positive. And this is why we have to have the love of God. This is why we have to have the spirit of God. And so God will help us in every area of life. And, and it specifically says, not just our ways and our thoughts, but specifically number four says, God's timing is better than our timing. How many of y'all have figured out God's timing is better than our timing? We think we know uh, what's the best time to do this, that, and the other. Another reason why it's so important to follow the direction of the Holy Spirit. We can only see past and present. God can see past, present, and future. Let me go ahead and get to this last point. God knows what's best for you. God knows what's best for me. God knows what's best for us. And then it says this, trust his plan. Um, that is found in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future, to give you an expected end. I also looked at the translation in the Message Bible. Uh, it says... I have it all planned out, plans to take care of you, not to abandon you, plans to give you the future that you hope for. Now, when I first read that, it kind of threw me because when I read previously in number four, 
Our thoughts are not his thought. Our ways are not his way. And then I read that B clause. It says the future that you hope for. Well, sometimes what we hope for is not what God's plan is for us. But this is why relationship with Jesus Christ, power of the Holy Spirit now living inside of you, digging into the word of God, memorizing that word, meditating on that word, then your thoughts will start becoming more like God's thoughts. Your ways will start becoming more like God's ways. Your activities and your behaviors will become more like God, if I can be even more specific, more like Jesus Christ. Let this mind, let this attitude be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. I like the fact that I can make plans and those plans can go awry, but the God that I love, the God that I worship, the God that I praise, the God that I serve has my best interests at heart. Uh, y'all seen those illustrations, uh, what, what do y'all call it? Uh, y'all call it uh, the fork in the road. When you're going down a path and you reach a point, do I go left or do I go right? How do you make the decision? Uh, how do you make the determination? I know what some of y'all say, well, I'll just flip a coin. Or I'll just what? I'll just guess and what? And hope that I'm making the right decision. I got some good news this afternoon, this morning. The good news is when you have a personal relationship with God, you stand at the fork and you simply ask God, what is the best choice? What is the best direction? Uh, God, you know, and because see, that fork is going like this, and y'all know the problem, even those of y'all that got 2020, you can only see so far down the left side of the fork, you can only see so far down the right side of the fork. So the truth of the matter is, you don't what? You don't really know which way to go. You need someone bigger than you. You need someone more wiser than you to help you make that decision. And how many of y'all, like me, are willing to admit this morning that I made the wrong turn? <laughs> and, you didn't, and you didn't know you made the wrong turn until you what? Until you got parts of the way down there and you were sorry you ever made that decision. Y'all have heard me say this numerous times from this pulpit and in Wednesday Bible study. Include God in the equation. Make sure when you are making decisions, and don't make this mistake, some of us will only include God on the, on the big decisions and the big choices. Uh, it's, it's an advantage, it's a blessing, and it's a benefit to even include God in some of those smaller decisions as well because a lot of those decisions are layered and will have either blessings or cursings as an end result. Yeah. Let me go ahead and close it out like this. Since God, according to number five, says, I know uh, the thoughts that I think for you, I've already established that uh, God has what? He has, a, he has a plan for us. I hope you're glad this morning that um, even before the foundation of the world, God implemented what we now call the plan of salvation. That is knowing that man was going to make the wrong choice and the wrong decision in the Garden of Eden uh, that not only got Adam and Eve kicked out, but it also, think about it, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, there is now what, uh, what we call a generational curse was actually put on all mankind. Uh, don't be shocked, don't be surprised when you see uh, how crazy uh, the world is today, uh, how mean and, and hateful people are toward one another, how we can't, um, uh, what's his name, the late Rodney King, who, yeah who took that beating in Los Angeles in 1994, later on as he recovered. You know what Rodney King said? And it's not in the Bible, but I got his point. He said, can't we all just get along? And have y'all noticed how we spend a lot of time, energy, and effort focusing on our differences? Uh, we focus on our differences in race. 
We focus on our differences in culture. We focus on our differences in politics. We focus on our differences on what side of the track we were born on, uh, who's rich, who's poor. We're always looking for the differences, but let me give you one similarity that all of us have. Uh, that whether you ever come in the right relationship with God or not, uh, you are a created being by God. And, uh, and since we got all these differences in, uh, in race and creed and all of that, get a butcher knife out, cut a black person, get a butcher knife out, cut a white person, and you know what you're going to see red blood. Uh, you're going to see the similarity. Uh, I'll give you this last one. It's ugly, but it's true. When life as we know it is over with, and I know some of y'all going to get cremated, uh, but most of the funerals I go to, like yesterday, they are traditional funerals where there's a casket, and then at the end of the service, the pastor, the eulogist always does what they call the committal. Um, and y'all know how the end of the committal goes? Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In other words, that body, that handsome man, that beautiful woman is going to go back to the dust that it was created out of originally. And so whether you go to Oak Hill or whether you go to Sunset or whatever particular cemetery you go to, they're going to dig a hole six foot deep and we all going to be in the same hole. And look at our similarities. And see, that's what I look at. When I look at people, irregardless of their skin color, race, creed, economic status, I look at you as a creation by God, but I also look uh, specifically the people that I know are saved, I look at you as children of God. Hopefully, as you've listened to this message today, some of these you may agree with, some of you may, you may still be questioning, but this is the one I hope you hold on to. Do you have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Have you asked God to forgive you of your sins and committed your life to him so when this life is over with, you'll be able to spend eternity with him? Five facts that every Christian certainly needs to understand. Can we thank God for the word of God this morning? I was, um, Henry and I spoke a little bit before service, and I want to thank Brother Henry, I want to thank Brother Bryce, and I certainly want to thank uh, all of our volunteers um, that have been working with our children uh, over the past couple of months. Uh, they've done a fantastic job. Uh, Mary Jane, Jennifer, so many of you uh, have stepped up to the plate. Um, as many of y'all know, and we have had her on our prayer list for quite a while now, and that's uh, Minister Cheryl Ricketts, who actually stepped up to the plate um, to take the leadership of our children's ministry. And probably uh, not more than a month of her making that commitment, uh, she ended up having brain surgery. We are continuing to pray um, and ask God's blessing for healing upon her. One of the things I, I love about serving in ministry, and God has proven this to me and many others in a variety of ways, you can't do it by yourself. Uh, it, it takes a team to do it. And what's been uh, so encouraging here at St. John's East, we've had people um, to step up to the plate in uh, Minister Ricketts' absence and make sure that our children's program goes forward. And not only is it going forward, it's growing, it's expanding, it's improving. Mary Jane came up to me all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed this morning. She had a little plaque announcement right there in front of Haas Hall announcing what's going on. That shows progress in your ministry and uh, just want you uh, to be grateful. The reason I mention that, Henry's been working with the kids and they've been working on a musical number uh, that they want to share uh, with the congregation. So we're going to do uh, communion first and then we're going to bring our kids back uh, and let them come in and uh, share what they have learned. Um, I take you back over 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ uh, sat at a table with his disciples. 
And unfortunately, uh, one of the 12 had already made the decision, had already made the commitment to betray him. Y'all know the story. 30 pieces of silver is what Judas received um, for, uh, in the conspiracy, if you will, and I put emphasis on conspiracy. People that didn't even like each other weren't even friends. I'm talking about the religious leaders, the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Roman soldiers conspired to get rid of Jesus. And so he sat at that table and they broke bread and they drank wine and he shared with them that this was the New Testament in his blood. And he also, uh, we make the point that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So as we prepare this morning to symbolically uh, celebrate uh, the broken body and the shed blood of Christ, is there anyone that has not received a communion cup? Would you raise your hand and Joan would be, Brother, Brother Joan, Brother Frank Patton here, please. I say symbolically because the bread or the cracker that you have in front of you is simply what? We have a couple of more. Thank you, Joan. Miss Brenda, Miss Daphne, thank you. This bread or this cracker that you have before you this morning is a representation of the broken body of Jesus Christ. And um, it, was a, it was a horrible scene, to be quite honest, um, how Jesus Christ was beaten beyond recognition. Uh, but he did that on our behalf. And then as we prepare to drink this grape juice or symbolically the wine, it too represents the shed blood of Jesus Christ. I'll say it one last time. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Let me give you briefly the difference between Old and New Testament. Old Testament, the blood that was shed was by turtle doves and lambs and bullocks. But you know what they had to do? They had to do it over and over and over. But Jesus only died one time. The good news this morning, that three days later, he rose with all power in his hands. And here's the really good news for us. Because he rose, one day you and I too will rise. Uh, the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And all of us that remain shall be caught up in the air to meet him in the clouds, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. With this symbolic bread, may we partake? And with the symbol of Christ's blood, may we partake? Let us pray. God, we're thankful that you've given us a word of encouragement today. You've listed in your word five things that we can focus on, five things that we can put more emphasis on in our relationship with you. And that's where it starts, God. It starts with confessing our sins, admitting that we can't live this life. We can't uh, do it by ourselves. But when we accept what you did on Calvary, over 2,000 years ago, when we allow your Holy Spirit to come and abide on the inside of us, then we'll quit trying to analyze you so much and we'll trust you. We'll quit worrying so much and we will pray more. Um, we will understand the fact that when individuals leave us, when individuals abandon us, we're going to stand on your promise, God, that you will never leave us, you'll never forsake us. God, even with all of our education and all of our intellect, we certainly need to understand your timing is better than our timing. Your ways are not our ways. Your thoughts are not our thoughts. And then last but not least, God, that you do have a plan. And that plan has been around since before creation. Since the foundation of the world, Christ died for the ungodly. God, we ask that you bless every individual that is with us this morning. We pray, God, that the seed of your word that has been planted uh, will go as good seed, planted in good ground, and in your own time will bring forth much fruit. 
God, we thank you, we praise you, and we love you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will have our director of music, Brother Henry Maurer, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, anoint them as the children's choir of St. John's East United Amen. Church of Christ. Give them a hand, y'all, as they come. So this month, they've been working on uh, the parable of the sower. You will, you'll notice if you can yeah. sort of see what. We're going to try to add in and see some of the songs. This is one of the first ones. Um, before I worked in music ministry, I worked in kids ministry with my mom. And so I learned a lot of songs, we'll call these like this, um, that have more of a message and somehow it all just seems to fit together today with the seeds and the, the whatnot. Okay? You know what you're doing? Okay. We're seed. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Now you get to grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Oh, but sometimes we neglect our Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink. Shrink, shrink, <laughs> neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, 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 and you'll shrink, 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 and you'll shrink, 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 neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, 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 but what can you do? Read your Bible, <laughs> pray every day, and you'll grow, 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 keep growing, and you'll grow, 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 and you'll grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Thank you so much, Brother Henry, and um, thank you, Mary Jane, Brother Kerry, for working with our young people, and we got a bunch of cuties here today. Now, I hope y'all were listening to the lyrics. How many of us adults need to understand what they just shared with us is not just for the kids. It's for us, too. And a lot of us, sadly, um, we look good, six foot, 215, but we was we shrink, we shrinking, we shrinking because we're not what? We're not reading that Bible every day. Thank y'all so much. Uh, we now want to pause and thank God for um, financial blessings, um, for health and strength, for relationships with family, friends, and loved ones. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. And as we bring our <laughs> tithes and offering, we are simply bringing back a portion of what he has already blessed us with. Let's pray, God, thank you for this time of worship, praise, fellowship. Thank you, God, for uh, our youth ministry. It is so encouraging um, to see that the seed of the word of God is being planted in them at an early age. Yes. The Bible teaches us that if you will train up a child while he or she is young, uh, when he becomes older or more seasoned, he will not depart from it. God, we thank you for every individual, family, guest, visitor that is with us this morning uh, for coming and being a part of this worship experience. For those um, that couldn't be here physically that are tuning in via live stream, thank you so much for joining us. Now, God, we ask your blessings on these tithes and offerings. Bless, multiply, sanctify these gifts as they go for the ongoing as well as the upbuilding of thy kingdom. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
benediction. Repeat after me. May the Lord watch, May the Lord watch. Between, me and thee. between me and thee while we're absent, while we're absent. One, from one from another. Let the words of my mouth, of my mouth. the meditation of my heart, the of my heart. Be, acceptable in thy sight. be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, o Lord. my strength, my, strength. My, redeemer. my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Everybody have a blessed week.